that is a big, big call to play Trippier at left back. And then even with Jack Grealish not bringing him on the pitch during the game when everyone was crying for Jack Grealish um, to come on the pitch. So for me, I think he, he's enormously experienced. He's, he's, he's actually learned a lot through his own experiences, but he's also seen real bad decisions, Gareth, in his playing career and in his uh, under-21 and managerial career around England and what managers have done with players, what managers have done with England teams. And he's not making those mistakes. Um, and even the detail, Mark and Andros, the, the, the chance that Foden had was a throw-in on this side. And that was a well-worked throw-in because they did it again about 10 minutes later. So the, the detail that he's putting into the performances around the throw-ins, around the set-pieces, the team selection per opponent, I think is something that should be really admired. And he's, he's a great international manager for us. Do you think his experience of playing in Euro 96 in front of the Wembley crowd played a part in his selection as well in terms of the experienced players he picked? Maybe. I mean, there were so many similarities to yesterday uh, with the Euro 96 day. It was boiling hot. It was mid-afternoon. Um, you know, first game at home in the tournament. Massive expectation to win. Uh, we were playing in Switzerland, who weren't probably the same, well, they weren't the same calibre as the opponent that England had yesterday with Croatia. And I think yesterday what he did was a, was a tactical and managerial masterclass to win that game. Let's, let's watch that game. I mean, Harry Kane didn't play particularly mm. well for Harry Kane. So it wasn't as if the players on the pitch were outstanding in any single way, but he managed the game perfectly. And I've been part of so many England teams where I've thought the other team was smarter, cuter, tactically better, more experienced. I thought England yesterday were all those things against a very experienced and excellent Croatia team in the last few years. I know yesterday people said they went over the edge and it was a, it was a, a team that have got old together, but that was only after the game, by the way. Mm. There weren't yeah. many people before the game saying Croatia are over the edge. They were all talking about Modric and Kovacic and how they're going to keep the ball in midfield. They only said they were done and finished and sort of too experienced and not the same team anymore after the game when England made them probably mm. look like that a little bit. Is that, Gary, actually the, the biggest positive, England's ability to manage the game? in a way that on so many other occasions, World Cup semi-final in particular, that's what they've not been able to do. Yeah, well, the populist yesterday wouldn't have had Trippier at left-back. It wouldn't have had two holding midfield players. Um, it maybe wouldn't have even had Raheem Sterling at left-wing. In fact, most wouldn't have had Raheem Sterling at left-wing because this perception that he's not had a good end to the season at Manchester City. So I think, to be fair, there were three or four big calls in that team selection yesterday. In fact, I'd have probably gone for the five at the back without Harry Maguire. So, if, you know, I always think that Stones and a another, Stones and Cody, Stones and Mings, I always think, is that a back two that can really win you a tournament? So he made a lot of decisions yesterday, Gareth, that I felt were against the grain of what, you know, would be the populist opinion of what others would have done. Um, and But it paid off. And um, I thought that yesterday, the way in which the team played, it was measured, it was controlled. I think he knew how he was going to win the game and, and plan and the plan paid off like you wouldn't believe. I think as well, like you said, he could have easily just brought Grealish on for 30 seconds a minute just to appease the fans. But the fact he didn't proves that he doesn't care what people say. He's going to do it his way and he got his reward yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I, Justin, I absolutely love Jack Grealish. I, I genuinely do love watching him play football. But I wouldn't pick him in front of Mason Mount. I wouldn't pick him in front of Phil Foden. And I wouldn't pick him in front of Raheem Sterling and Harry Kane at this moment in time. I, that might seem sort of <laughs> unpopular but Phil you can't have Grealish, Foden, Mount, Kane and Sterling in the same team so actually if you said to me at this moment in time I would definitely have Foden 100% on that right hand side I would 100% have Harry Kane I would definitely have Mount in behind so I think he'd lose the team together yeah. I think Mount is such a brilliant player for the team and then on that left I would always go with Marcus or Raheem because I would want one quick one if Harry's playing up front so if Foden's on the on the right who doesn't run forward as much he's not a type of player he's not a sprinter I would definitely always have uh, Raheem or Marcus on the left because they can run beyond Harry and I think Harry needs players running behind him so for me I probably wouldn't have selected Gar uh, Grealish yesterday so there is this clamour for Jack Grealish to come on the pitch maybe you would have brought him on like you say Andros you just said, you know, you saw him warming up and all the yeah. fans cheering. And Gareth thought, no, I'll leave you to Scotland or I'll leave you. And when he does use him, he'll have an impact upon the on the game, I'm sure.
That's the point, Gary. If you're Jack Grealish this morning, you have to believe you are going to get notable minutes in this championship because if England do go far, the games, by definition, are going to get tougher and tougher. It's hot, seven games in 28 days. You have to think if you're Jack Grealish this morning, stay calm and play plenty in this championship. Would you not? Absolutely. I think when England are playing against a team that sit deep, where they have to break them down, where there's less space, they have to be more innovative and creative in the final third, you'll see Jack Grealish enter the pitch or start the game. I'm absolutely certain of that. But against Croatia, when the feeling was Croatia outperformed us, outpassed us in the last tournament, they were going to have lots of the ball through Modric, who was going to dominate the game. I think that's the reason that this game probably didn't suit, didn't, didn't suit Jack Grealish. And Gareth Southgate will pick horses for courses. He's proven that in the last you know, four or five years. He doesn't pay attention to the media. He doesn't pay attention to the sort of populist view. He doesn't sort of pick the players from the big clubs just because they're playing for a big club. He picks the right players. And I think that to me, you know, I played with Gareth a lot. Um, and I think Gareth's experiences with England are vast as a player and vast as a manager and his under-21 coach. And I think he's seen the pain and I think he's seen the the ills of managerial mistakes before where you go for what would be the, the fans are clamouring for a player, the media are clamouring for a player, get him on the pitch. He's not going to get involved in that. He's too pragmatic. He's too cold. He's unemotional about it. And he'll do what's right for this group of players in the team. But Jack Grealish will play a part in this tournament. He's too good not to. But it'll be at the right time when Gareth Southgate says he comes on.